Okay, welcome everybody. This is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call for May 5th, 2021. And um, we are going to be um, talking today about teaching awards. But before we do that, um, the agenda link is in the chat area. If you'd like to go ahead and follow that link and sign in, please. We appreciate it. And um, as we usually do, we start off with a few announcements and updates. So um, I'd just like to remind folks about the Aperio Fellows nominations that just opened recently. Um, there's a link in the Etherpad to the nomination form as well as the deadline, which is May 14th. So it's coming up quick, um, but we do wanna uh, honor the fellows at the Open Aperio um, conference in June. So uh, you know, we kind of have a quick timeline on that. Um, if you are interested in nominating somebody, I, I highly encourage you to nominate someone. You can even nominate yourself. Um, the Perio Fellows are intended to recognize folks that have um, contributed to heavily to any of the Perio projects over the last 12 months. So it's really meant to acknowledge their work in the last year. Um, Prior fellows are not eligible, so it does need to be someone who has not previously been awarded a fellowship. Um, but if you're not sure who is or isn't a prior fellow, there's a link there that um, will show you the, the full list. Um, so you can uh, hopefully find someone new that hasn't been acknowledged yet. So again, I encourage you to, um, to nominate uh, maybe one of your peers or colleagues or even yourself if you um, think that you would like to participate in that. Um, do we have any other announcements right now? So we'll move on to our main event, which is a discussion of the um, the teaching awards um, with Ian Dolphin. And Ian, did you want to do some screen share to show the uh, the fellows program, or I'm sorry, the um, the draft proposal for the teaching award program? I've put the links to it in the chat in big blue button and in the Etherpad document. Both of those documents are open access to the web. Uh, at least for the length of this meeting. So folks should be able to see them if they if they want to. Okay. I'll go ahead and screen share just for the recording. So if, if somebody's watching this later, they can look at something interesting. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Ian, if you'd like to kind of talk us through this. Sure. So, I mean, first of all, I apologize for the lateness of bringing this uh, proposal to you. Um, We've been impacted by the pandemic, as everybody has. Uh, I should set a little bit of context. Uh, volunteer efforts certainly been impacted by the pandemic across the foundation as people focus on fixing things in their day jobs. Um, I should also explain that the foundation has no full-time staff. Uh, we're all contractors, we're all part-time. So the Atlas Awards have developed a strong track record, but we've seen a slight decline in interest over the years. Uh, it's been certainly the topic of conversations earlier in the year. Uh, the feeling was that the pandemic has impacted the ability of faculty to respond to traditional award structures. Um, so I brought a proposal to you to run a simpler one generic category process award. There's some interest in this kind of award from folks outside Aperio. Uh, in conversations with Free Software Foundation Europe, they've expressed an interest. I don't want to uh, over-represent that interest, but I think there's a potential for growing partnerships, <clears throat> excuse me, around a more generic open source software award. In other words, an award based around the use of any open source software, including a period, but not limited to it. Um, I think it's also the case that over the course of the last 18 months, we've seen responses at an institutional level to the pandemic, which have been built around open source software. Uh, and it would be a shame to let the opportunity to connect with those developments drop for this year. Uh, a more generically named award 
would open up some possibilities in terms of outreach as well as partnership. But I don't think we should tie the awards to the pandemic, if you like. I think what I'm seeking to do by suggesting this single category, more generic award about innovation with teaching and learning around open source software is to open out possibilities for the future rather than closing them. So on the first paper that uh, I've passed around, which is just about a side of A4, you see some of that motivation. Then you see uh, a paragraph motivating a draft appeal, motivating submissions for a, a single track award. Something of the criteria are presented in the other document, and we've actually borrowed this from uh, conversations with Myers College in upstate New York, who ran an internal award. Uh, one significant difference, I think, that we're suggesting here is that uh, we're not limiting the award to Aperio software, as I said. Neither are we limiting it to self-proposal. A colleague could propose some, someone for, uh, for this award. I think it's doable, with the possible exception of selecting uh, an appropriate name, which is always something which is problematic with these things. I think it's doable. I think we could, you know, we'd be looking, say, for a, a submission that was around a side of A4, uh, at one side of, of paper, um, some ch a checklist there and some comments about how we might handle that. But really, what I wanted to do was to uh, was to send you out. It would be a shame if we didn't run an award process for teaching and learning this year. We've been challenged in the way that I've indicated that both volunteer and staff time as staff have picked up work that volunteers haven't been doing because of the pandemic. Uh, and really, I just wanted to solicit your ideas about it and whether you thought it was worth proceeding and doable in the time frame. So over to you. Sorry, I was muted. Um, <laughs> I think it's a really great idea because we have been kind of in a time crunch. I think all of us, um, faculty in particular, um, and uh, coming up with, you know, the whole package to present as part of an application would, I think, maybe kind of um, limit the number of folks that are willing to, to put that kind of time into preparation. But if we can have a quick form to nominate someone that is doing great things and we'd like to see recognized, I think that that um, will be a much better way to go and the, the fact that Marist has kind of a, a process that they use is great because we can sort of clone that um, to uh, model our own process on. Does anybody else have any thoughts? Quiet group today. I see Dave typing. The Adam typing. Spence is killing me. All right, so Charles says we should cue the Jeopardy music. Yeah, <laughs> totally. All right, so Adam doesn't have audio today, um, but he says that the criteria are interesting and he wonders about simplifying a review process. People are unfor unfortunately overwhelmed and fatigued. Yes, um, definitely uh, agree there. So um, I'd, I'd add that. I mean, I think Josh Wilson made a call. I shared, shared this draft with yesterday. Um, 
made a comment about reducing the criteria, and I think that's right. The thing is, we've got a long list there, and it's a lot easier to delete than it is to build one from scratch. Yeah, maybe just a couple per. Each criteria has several items under it, so maybe if we trim that down to just the two most important ones under each criteria or something, that would cut down on the work. Uh, Dave writes that he thinks the suggestion to provide means of response to the recognition process would be helpful given the global response to the pandemic. There's obviously folks doing some things in the midst of hard and trying times that are doing innovative things. Um, <laughs> I, don't no, know, I, 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 I agree. I agree. I think we can reduce those criteria a lot and boil it right down. Yeah. Yeah, he's also, Dave's also um, for the reduction of criteria. Um, and Adam wonders if the pool of applicants would be sufficiently large that the criteria would make a distinction between the applicants. That's a good question because um, the last couple of years there have been fewer and fewer applicants. Um, so. If we and given the late hour that we're presenting this, I, I don't imagine that we'll get a flood of people being nominated. So I would imagine it would be a fairly small pool. I think we've got one slight difference this year. I mean, the program for Open Aperio 21 is being released this week. There are strong elements of partnership in that program. So, you know, there are a couple of sessions that we're actually a couple of plenaries that we're effectively running jointly with the Association for Learning Technology, which is based in the UK, but it's got a lot bigger reach. And we've got a session, another plenary on open source program offices in higher ed, which are designed to be a kind of interface between an institution and open source communities out with the institution with a bit of a focus on actually on research practice currently but it, it gives us um that's effectively giving us a broader audience so i don't think we'd be flooded with responses but i do think it would be slightly different in other years by de-emphasizing the specific role of a perio software in there although you know we'd obviously want to encourage uh, the use of a perio software and its representation and submissions but by making it more generic i think we stand a greater chance of capturing some of that breadth of innovation um and you know the criteria is always a balance i think it's right to reduce it getting the balance broadly right the first time should be followed through by adjusting it and continuing to iterate it Yeah, that would be pretty interesting if we got some folks from outside of Aperio. I know it's it's always been the Aperio Awards, so that would definitely be a big change. Um, but I think a good one. I've got a question which folks can plus one in the chat if they'd like to. Is if you were if we did this, if we went ahead with it. Um, how many of you would be prepared to act as reviewers? I mean, I'm assuming we wouldn't get more than perhaps 24 submissions. I might be wrong. Could anybody find time for that? We need the Jeopardy music again. Yeah, we do. <laughs> you have an app on your phone that makes time, Dave? I want one of those. <laughs> if I had one of those, I'd buy yeah. two phones. <laughs> Is that like that thing in Harry Potter? The little necklace, I forget what it's called. <laughs> time Turner, yes. <laughs> time Turner available by the App Store. I'm sure we can round up a few other volunteers. We've got kind of a smaller group today. 
um, but I can uh, let people know in some of the other working groups and um, we can announce it on the list and hopefully more folks to volunteer. So Ian, um, what were you thinking of in, as a timeline? I forget if that was in here or not. I was thinking about working up the draft appeal, the checklist, and reducing and shaping the criteria over the course of the next week. We're going to have the program launch for Open Aperio, I hope, tomorrow, although there are one or two last-minute things, as always. But yeah. I, would I would hope that we could announce this, like, middle of next week. Okay. If there are any volunteers for helping shape it, then that would be fantastic. Perhaps if you either draw, indicate now or give it a bit of thought, drop Wilma or myself a line, that would be completely cool. Um, anybody else have any thoughts? Uh, you all have access to the documents, so if you would like to um, add a comment or um, you know, highlight something uh, in the criteria list that maybe you think should be you know, kept or deleted or you know, anything along those lines, feel free to, to make comments directly on those documents. Yeah, I'm probably going to be restricting access so we can get to work editing by tomorrow morning UK time. But uh, if you want to add anything after that point, just request access and I'll, I'll do the usual Google Docs fly swatting act to give you access. <laughs> All right, great. Well, thank you, Ian, for sharing this. And I do think it's a good improvement. So it should be um, should be an exciting change in the award process. Yeah. Get that yeah. out there soon. Thanks for your time. I'm going to get back to open Aperio stuff now, but okay. uh, appreciate <laughs> well, we appreciate it. you joining us, and uh, we'll definitely try to round up some more volunteers. Okie dokie. Speak later. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. All right. So um, we do have a few jiras on here to discuss if you guys would like to um to move into jirapalooza land since we have um a little over half an hour left let me actually add another one that earl just sent me um today this is apparently about the um Default point value for assignments. So why don't we take a look at that one? It's kind of hot off the presses. All right, so assignments with assignment default grading and points. Looking for maybe a link to a Jira. Let me just ask Earl. Oh, I see that Laura pasted something in. Is that the Jira associated with this one? Yeah, that, that, looks that, like just... the one. that looks okay. like the one. Yep. Thank you. Okay, 
So let's see. Some institutions would like the option for grade this assignment to be checked by default when creating a new assignment. So there's a checkbox under the grading section that is not selected. And, um, okay, I think I'm understanding what the issue is. Maybe once you check that box, it, it requires, oops, it requires points. So what would be the, def the ideal default point value? to have pre-filled if that box is auto-selected. And I think the discussion in the JIRA is basically that you can't set one because they're all over the board. And because it's a grade, you don't want it to auto-fill and have faculty not realize that it's auto-filled. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it, that's a slippery slope. Yep. So, yeah. So several folks were coming down on the no default is appropriate. What do what do you guys think? What um Dave agrees with Laura. Um definitely no default for a point value. Is any, would anybody like to pose a counter argument? It sounds like everyone's in agreement that there should not be a default. So Dave's I guess asking, the, the next question is, what does it do then? If it's if you set you set it's you know if it's automatically going to grade and it needs to have a grade, does it let you go all the way through setup and then when you click post, pop up a window that says you need to set a grade, or does it? You know, what kind of message is it going to send you to force you to enter a grade there? Since it's a required item, it seems like it would give you a message prompting you to go back and fill that in. Um, I suppose you could try manually selecting it and see what it does right now. That's probably the, the current behavior. Dave's asking if there was a default point value in the past. I don't think that there was. I don't recall there ever being a default because I believe that this was not selected by default. It's it's um, this will be a change to have it grade by by default. Correct. Yes. Yeah. This is this is new. I it now. Okay, so Earl wrote back that they were guessing and they were just being a wild guess of 10 points, but that's certainly not going to suit for everyone. So, yeah, so if, you, if you choose to, if you've got the grade this assignment checked, but you haven't set it and you click post, then it sets you back up to the top of the page with a red alert that says, please specify the maximum points. So, I mean, that's, yeah. That I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. So um, just to summarize, the group is in favor of having the grade button, this assignment checked as the default setting on a new assignment? Or would you like that to be something that's configurable at the institution? I don't know if it's like a property or something. I didn't read that deeply. All 
Sorry, my dog is upset at a cat outside. Mm. <laughs> you can probably hear her whining. Mm. Okay, so any other thoughts on this one? We, we like uh, leaving it blank. Um, and the the jira itself is like uh is um the option to make it checked by default so making it an option sounds to me like it would be something that you could choose at the institution level what default setting you want at your institution is that's my understanding All right, so Laura is saying that she would like to see it as a, a property or something that could be set somewhere in, in a, an option setting. Okay, well, I will um, mark this one as um, T&L reviewed if nobody else has any thoughts on it. And I'll do that after the call mm -hmm. so you don't have to sit and watch me type. Um, <laughs> and we'll go ahead and move on to our next JIRA, which is, um, I guess, I click no here. That was a no default score. Oops. Then, So let's go to this next JIRA, which is test and quizzes. This one is um, from Tiffany. I don't see her on the call today. Um, let's see. It changes an earlier JIRA to prevent instructors from limiting which students' TAs can grade in tests and quizzes. Wow, that's a long test script. <laughs> okay, let me read through this, see if we understand what's going on here. So, Prior to this specific JIRA uh, 43104, it was possible to assign realm permissions to TAs so they could only grade students who are also added to at least one group of which they were a member. Um, and you could do this by granting them the, the section role TA permission, grading permissions to the section role TA. Um, with the grading implement, permissions implemented as above, assuming the TA was added to a group of the students, they could see that student submission and um, tests and in, in tests and quizzes for grading. The ability to restrict which groups of a, a TA can grade can be beneficial. Um, and then she gives some examples. Um, but the um, SAK 43104 overrides that ability, and TAs can now grade all students all the time. Um, so she's proposing that a new pair of realm permissions should be added, and preferably on the permissions tab, you could choose whether you want TAs to grade all students or just students in the group. Um, and she doesn't want permissions to include other user roles. She doesn't want uh, instructors to inadvertently change student permissions. Okay, so let's take a look at this other JIRA that's referenced here. See, this is kind of an inter this is interesting to see how the different uh, universities use TAs. We have two different TA roles here. We have one that's a registrar role where they're like a one percent instructor in the class and they basically have all abilities that the professor has but then we also have 
or, or the designer or the, any instructor in the course. So like everything. But then we have mm -hmm. an undergrad TA. And we actually, um, because they're very, very limited, the instructor actually has to add the sections tool and then assign the TA to a section in order for them to be able to grade anybody so that only those students in that section um, are visible to them in the grading screen. So I don't know how this. Uh, yeah, I think this that. I think this Jira was uh, making it so that you didn't have to add the TAs into the sections. Is, um, you may not be have including TAs in the actual sections, but it sounds like um, UVA, that's kind of the way they operate, and they don't want TAs to see all the sections. They want to have to put them into the sections. So yeah, it is sort of a difference in the way people are using that TA role. Um, but I, I think this is this is probably easier for most people to understand, frankly, the Tiffany's look at it, because it doesn't make any sense to most of our professors to have to add the sections tool to then assign a TA to a role. It would make more sense to them to use that permissions tab to do it. So I think this might be a better way to handle that. I'm wondering. Flip this way, new tabs. I can flip back and forth. Um, I don't know if this one. Yeah. So this this particular Jira is saying that you have to have both of these permissions to be able to grade. Um. Tiffany is proposing different one, right? New pair of wrong permissions, assessment grade. So this would be just for assessments. Um, I'm looking to see if the other one's more general. Section role, instructor, and assessment grade. Okay. Um, so assessment is the more specific one to tests and quizzes. So what did the folks on the call think? Which scenario is more like what you do at your institution? Do you typically have TAs at all? Um, do you prefer for them to be kind of like an, an instructor where they can grade anybody? Or do you tend to restrict them? All right, so Dave is saying that most of them are in individual sections. The course that's itself is in individual sections. So you usually don't run into that problem at all. Um, Charles is saying that you have two TA roles, one that can do most things an instructor does, and one that's restricted to grading only. Um, Adam says that they don't use TA, TAs to grade tests and quizzes at all. Um, so Charles, the, the folks that do restrict grading, do they do that by section for the TAs? We, we have tried to do that in the past and in, in that an instructor will set up groups for their different instructors and then try and restrict by group. But we've always had some issues with the permissions thing in the grade book of it not always working properly. Wow, so bottom line is we all use TAs differently. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I'm taking away from this. There is no consensus. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, this, yeah. this will probably this take a lot to talk about. Yeah, it is. It really is. I think um, we should maybe, you know, get this on the list and give people a chance to chime in asynchronously. Um, if if they you know don't normally attend this call, they might not able to voice an opinion so um so i'll post this on the, the user list and see if we can get some conversation going there um but yeah it's definitely going to be a challenge to come up with a, a scenario that that can easily address all the different ways that people are using tas so um 
Yeah, we'll come back to that one. <laughs> Anybody else want to chime in before we move on? That's a good decision, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make a note to that effect on the JIRA. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag thorny issue. All right. Um, continued. All right, so we'll move on to the next one, which is changing question type after test and quiz. All right, so the quiz was created with multiple uh, type of questions published and graded. And while trying to edit the quiz and change some of the question types to multiple choice, the system gave an error. Um, okay, so I guess this is, is asking a question is it desirable to allow the instructor to change the question type after it's been published and submitted? So that's changing the actual question, not just the, the correct answer on something. Um, that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to change it or the, the question that we're asking doesn't make sense? Well. <clears throat> I'm not sure what the question is. Should it I don't be know possible? why I don't yeah, know why you would possible? want to why would why would you want to change a question type after students have already submitted? What well, what are you changing why that just doesn't make any sense to me that you yeah. would allow that. I mean I can see that it shouldn't necessarily when it says throws up an error. I'm trying to figure out what error it's actually, if it's actually showing up a bug page, it shouldn't do that. It should just say, no, you can't do that. But mm -hmm. I don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, I tend to agree. I mean, that's, if you let, if you let the type be changed, it's basically changing the whole question. Now, um, does, does, is Christina asking the question in the comments? She says, mm -hmm. if this is not desired, then we need to have the question type grayed out. So is it not? I guess not. Because right now it throws an error when you try to do it. So it'll apparently give you the option to try, but then it it, it doesn't succeed, but it doesn't give okay. you any kind of warning. So it might be more of a that. UX issue that the, the user interface just needs to actually not provide a means of changing the question type right because otherwise people expect that they have the opportunity to do so yeah that sounds reasonable to me that, that, that sounds reasonable changing the ux to actually deny the capacity for someone to change the the, the question type after the fact makes sense right otherwise we're invoking Agreed. the idea that you could yeah well, the JIRA's testing, uh, testing comments say the expected result would be that they would be able to change the question type. I, that might be a faulty assumption to begin with. Yes. Should be able to modify the question type? No, I think the answer no, is no. No, no, <laughs> Yeah. They Too emphatically late. should not be able to change the question yep. type. Too late. Yeah. So this JIRA's kind of... And, and, and unless, unless it's, it's kind of just written poorly and that the apparent expected result is that you should be able to modify the question type. Not that that's actually the desired behavior. Right. Right. So it, it could be that, that this the just inferred, wasn't the inferred written result. real well. <laughs> right. Yeah. It doesn't say desired it, behavior anywhere. It just says hey, listen, expected. This is about this is about Samago, right? Samago doesn't infer anything for us. <laughs> we imply a lot of stuff, but it doesn't actually infer anything. Yes, we do. We imply <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Poor Samago. All right. So I will add to this one that um, we should think it should not be allowed and it should prevent the user from even attempting that action, which is kind of what Christina was hinting at in her comment. So I will, I will mark that up after we end today. All right, cool, moving on. Um, I'll do a little note here. Questions should not be modified. 
identify our question type. Um, okay, so this next one was one that we had carried over, I think, from a few other um, calls, and I'm not sure. This was, I think, a roll-up Jira. Um, or no, this was about templates. I, I hate to talk about this one without Tiffany on the call because I'm sure she will have. And this is templates specific to testing quizzes? Yes, this is um, improvements for assessment types or templates, essentially. Um, assessment types are a way of creating templates and tests and quizzes. But um, since it's a parent JIRA and it's got a lot of pieces, Tiffany was the um, primary author here. I hesitate to discuss this one without her until um, Oh, Laura's pinging her. Okay. Yeah, she may be tied up. We can table this for another call when Tiffany is here. Um, she can't make it today, unless somebody would like to talk about this one, but um, I'd prefer to have Tiffany's opinion included. She's still excited about the changing the question type. I'm trying to redirect her. <laughs> 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 yeah, we agree with that one. <laughs> yeah, she said, please, if you could hold on to that one. Okay, so we'll just carry that one over. Um, so are there any other ones that are not on this list that somebody is just dying to discuss? We'll have to say that uh, at Notre Dame, we're where I'm kind of going through all the rubric and JIRAs because there's some stuff in rubrics that really ought to be um, tackled. And uh, mm -hmm. right now, as I'm going through them, a lot of them can be closed. So um, I've been pinging Andrea and she's been, you know, it's like some of them were opened in 2019 and for whatever, whatever magic happened in between then as we cleaned the thing up, um, some of these things just got taken care of just without anyone having to pay attention to the JIRA. So we're closing those. So it looks like um, group awareness, and there was another one scoring. I have to get back into that spreadsheet and start digging in again. Um, it, it won't be, I don't think, a ton of stuff. I've been able to check up like five or six things off of the, the sheet that we had that we wanted to see tackled. So, um, but I, I think we need to pay attention to rubrics because it's such an awesome tool, but there's just some things in it that aren't quite working right that if we could clean those up, it would be a very, very powerful um, Sakai story that we have for our own tool. So. so I'm having a thought here because our May 19 meeting, and it's in two weeks, is open. How about a rubrics palooza where we just look at rubrics jiras? That'd be great. That'd be a great idea. Yeah. Can you round up a few that we can look at? Sure, yeah. I always forget how Jirapalooza is spelled. Is that with a G or a Z or a S? Oh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's a made up word. <laughs> I think it's a Z. It's a Z. It's a Z. It's got yeah, a Z now. Go so. with it. Yeah. There we go. All right. So, um, so we'll plan to do that next time. Um, does anybody have any thoughts for other ones that they want to tackle today? Or should we end a little bit early? Everyone's weighing in on the Z issue. <laughs> All right. Okay, so there's one from Birdie. Let's see what this one is. This one is easy way for instructors to throw out a um, question from an exam. All right, so this is a feature request. Um, where an uh, instructor wants to throw out a question. There's not an easy way to do this. 
Um, you're requesting an option with like a little checkbox to exclude the question. Um, it would throw it out as if it wasn't part of the test. What do the rest of you think? Is this something that you could see being popular at your institution? I can see that being helpful because if they find that a question is just too ambiguous or they didn't have the correct answer written, you know, as a choice correctly, they have to manually go through in the question screen and regrade everyone to give them the extra point or I don't know, Charles, what do you guys do to fix that? Um, so to basically go in and either edit the grading of the question if that's possible mm -hmm. and do a regrade and republish um, which can be a pain um, the one thing here is that 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 I would point out is that um, they're talking the the jury is kind of talking about okay we're just going to throw this question out entirely and there won't be any points associated with it that can throw people's grading schemes up. For example, yeah. if they've got a set of, of items and they're dropping the lowest, well, if you yeah. throw a question out, then that changes the point value of that item and that screws up the, the dropping lowest possibility. So really what the, there, there ought to also either and or be an option of, okay, just give everybody credit for this question, full credit for this. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah, Adam yeah, you just wrote that. It, yeah. um, you know, I just want to give full credit for for everybody for this question. With like one check. Without having to go through. And, yeah. I didn't read this. Does Alan have a suggestion? Right, because the other problem is if, if it changes the overall point value of the assessment, okay. that becomes a problem, right? I mean, to excuse yeah. it, but then what do you do yes. with the overall point value? Then you're yeah. going to have flags that Samago is going to be nasty to gradebook. <laughs> yep. No, yep. it's true. Yeah, yeah. And, exactly. and like Charles says, then then you know, drop the lowest grade in a category and the grade book breaks as well. Or doesn't break yeah. and yeah. something it's something weird is gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, or it throws off yeah, your percentages change, change. and people are getting like your a point total, eight the total you know. points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's one of the reasons why we don't have it yet. <laughs> Probably. Because <laughs> this originally was suggested in 2012, so it's been open. Well, it was reopened. <laughs> it was actually closed for a while. It looks like it got closed um, in 2017, and then it was reopened in 2020. So now this the regrade, yeah. yeah, the regrade and republish addresses some of it, but not all of it. It's it's a little. Um, laborious so people are still asking for a checkbox so um so the feeling on the call is that yes this would be a good feature um and it as part of it it should automatically credit the student the points that that would that question would have had correct that certainly needs to be an option the question is whether there should also be i guess should there be an option to throw the question out well it sounded like at least for the folks on the call they seem everyone seemed in favor of being able to throw a question yeah. out Adam is suggesting that the questions tab when we're viewing scores is a place to do this. And does everyone agree that the questions tab is the place to do this? Or Absolutely. Being, okay. Absolutely. Yep. Then you'd click on the question number, and that's where you could apply the grade or however you want to throw it out and give everyone credit option. That's a good idea. Yeah, no, that's the perfect place to put it. And it might be at the top of the, you know, the grade grading fields are all in a line in the column. Maybe at the top of that, you say, assign everybody the grade or something. OK. 
Okay, so Dave's asking, uh, Jordy, what do you think of that? Sounds perfect. Okay. Cool. I will add notes to that effect on the, um, the JIRA. And it looks like we're just about out of time. We've only got five minutes left. Um, oh, Adam has one more comment. It would have to be clear in the wording that you could not exceed the maximum points for the question. Um, I'm not sure I understand. I, I think he's thinking that um, the option would be set up to say, OK, add x number of points to every four for this question where that's not what the behavior should be it should be just give yeah. everybody the maximum number of points yeah i was thinking it would be throw out this question and um, award the points to the students like not give them an option you know you can you can give people points for it and throw it out um but you can't like give them more points or less points. Mark all is. <laughs> I like that. Mark all is correct. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Mark Although, what happens correct. if this is one of those partial correct kind of things? Will, will there be something in there that I'm just trying to think of all the gotchas that Samago has for question types. Well, if um, if it's if you're throwing out the question. And the partial credit scoring shouldn't come into play because the whole question will be worth a certain amount. Sure. Okay. Assign maximum points to all or something. All right. Well, any other thoughts on that one? Okay. Well, I will mark all of these as reviewed and put some comments in JIRA. And um, I appreciate everybody um, giving some thought to these issues. And um, we'll look forward to a rubrics, Jirapalooza, in two weeks. So uh, put on your rubrics thinking hats. And, um, <laughs> and hopefully you guys can join us then. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Wilma. Bye, all.